So in the previous video, we worked with the equilibrium constant expression and value for water. And you looked at calculating the concentration of OH minus given a concentration of H3O plus. And then you compared those two concentrations in order to, to determine whether or not we had an acidic or basic solution. Um, now, although it's not that difficult to compare those co concentrations, excuse me, uh, to figure out which one's higher, concentration of H3O plus or the concentration of OH minus, um, but we've developed a what we call the pH scale, which makes it a little bit more user friendly to determine um, whether or not a solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. Okay. So pH is defined as, or how we calculate the pH, is this is the negative log of the concentration of H3O plus. And this is an equation that you are definitely going to want to know. Um, another thing about this pH value, since we're taking, uh, this is a mathematical operation called a logarithm. Okay? And because we're taking the logarithm of a number, uh, our pH values are unitless. So the only two values that you can use in this quarter that don't require a unit with them are your equilibrium constants and your pH values. Okay. Um, now, most of you do not know what a logarithm is, and hopefully you are not panicking over not knowing what this is. Um, this is a mathematical operation. Like I said, it's called a logarithm. Okay. And what it does is it takes really, really, really big numbers or really, really, really small numbers and puts them on a more manageable scale. Okay, so with our acids and bases, we're going to be dealing with concentrations ranging from, uh, say, 10, around 10 um, to the negative 1, perhaps, all the way down to things in like 10 to the negative 14. Okay, that's a really, really big range of very, very small concentrations. So if we take the logarithm values of those, okay, it's going to take the number uh, according to its base of 10. Okay, base 10 meaning we have uh, 10 numerical values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That's what our number system is based off of. Okay, and it's going to put it on a, a more manageable to scale. So for us, our typical pH scale is going to be between 0 and 14. Okay, this is our typical pH scale. Now we can have values that are beyond that. We can have values that go negative. We can have values that go higher than 14. But for the most part, we're going to be dealing with concentrations be or pH values between 0 and 14. Okay. Now, how this uh, logarithm works, uh, you do not need to know that. Okay. All I need you to know is how to push the log button on your calculator. Okay, on this particular calculator, it's right here. <clears throat> this says LOG. Okay, most all of your calculators will have this uh, button. You need to make sure that you have a calculator that has this button for your final. Okay, uh, so make sure you have a calculator that has this log button. Um, if you can't find it, it's the button that's usually associated with 10 to the x. So you may have been using that that, that button for your scientific notation. Okay, so. Um, all I need you to do is be able to hit that log button to get your value. Okay, that's all you need to do that for this class. You don't have to understand what the logarithm is. You don't have to understand how it's calculated. You don't have to understand what it means. Um, all you need to do is be able to get the numbers out of your calculator. Okay. So let's work through an example. Let's look at what is the pH of pure water. Mm. 
Well, in order to know, calculate the pH, we have to have our concentration of H3O+. Okay. And from our previous lecture, we know that the concentration of H3O+, in pure water, is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. And don't forget our units on that. That's molarity. So in order to calculate the pH, we have pH is equal to the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. We plug this into our calculator here. I'm going to say my negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. Finish my parentheses there. And I have a pH of 7. Okay. Now, uh, on some of your other calculators, you'll want to watch out. Sometimes you hit your number in first, and then hit the log button, and then hit the negative. Okay, sometimes you'll hit the log button, your value, and then the negative. Um, so you'll have to kind of play around with your calculator to see what order you need to plug your numbers in. Okay. Um, for more advanced calculators like this one, um, if you have graphing calculators, um, you're going to type it in just like this with your negative, press the log button, and then your value. Um, the, the order of when you plug in the values really changes when you have a very simple calculator. Um, so you'll want to play around with that. This is a really good example to play around with that to make sure you're getting the correct value. Okay. All right, so if we know that the pH of pure water is 7, and we know that pure water is neutral, what that tells us is a pH value of equal to 7. And that is a neutral solution. If our concentration of hy the hydronium ion, or H3O+, plus increases, meaning our solution becomes acidic, what's going to happen to the pH value is it's actually going to get smaller than 7. So if we have a pH value that's basically 0 up to not including 7, this is going to be an acidic solution. And if we have a pH then that's greater than 7 up to 14, okay, not including 7, that is going to be a basic solution. So another way to kind of look at this, a neutral solution is going to be when our pH is equal to 7. Acidic is when it's less than 7. And basic is going to be when it's greater than 7. Okay. And again, these values going from 0 to 7, 7 to 14, those are just our typical range that we'll be seeing. All right. So if we're looking for the, or the pH, we have to have the concentration of H3O+. Plus. But what if we're given a pH and we want to calculate the concentration of H3O+. Plus. Well, all we're going to do is the opposite mathematical operation of this equation, okay? which uh, basically what I'm saying is the opposite of multiplication is division, the opposite of addition is subtraction, okay? the opposite of a logarithm is 10 to the something. So if we want to go in the reverse direction, if we're looking for the concentration of H3O+, plus, we are going to take 10 to the negative pH value. And this is the opposite of this equation here. So this is another equation you're going to want to know. Chapter 10, probably a really good one to have a piece of paper of all the things, uh, all the equations and things you'll want to know especially for practicing for the final exam. 
and I didn't mark it, but you will want to know these ranges of pHs. You're going to need to know which is acidic, which is basic, and which is neutral. All right, so let's work an example here okay, of using this second equation. Let's look at what is the concentration of H3O plus if we have a pH of 8.25. So we follow our equation here. We are looking for the concentration of H3O plus. We want 10 to the negative pH value. So we have 10 to the negative 8.25. Now having a decimal up in your exponent is improper. Okay, so you cannot just leave the value like this. This is incorrect. This is not a mathematically appropriate number. Okay, so we do have to plug this into our calculator. So again, there's a number of different ways to do this on your calculator. You can use your caret number. Um, I don't recommend using the EE key because it's going to kind of calculate it. Um, it. It'll be okay. It just might calculate it weird if you have a very simple calculator. Most of the time you can use the second function of your log button. Okay, so log button here, the opposite of the log is 10 to the x. So I'm going to hit second, my log button, and notice I have 10 to the something. So I'm going to hit negative 8.25. And I get this point zero 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 six, which that's going to be much more convenient for me to write in scientific notation. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm moving it nine times to the right. So I have something like six point zero zero times ten to the negative 9 molar. So I had three sig figs in my pH value, which is why I have three sig figs here. Okay, I had the 6 was my last digit that I know, and so I add the two zeros to add to my significant figures. And I added molarity here. Remember, because pH is the only value that can be unitless as well as the equilibrium constants. So I'm looking for a concentration. Those square brackets mean molarity. Okay. For some of you, okay, if you are working these through on your own calculator, you may have gotten a slightly different number, and that's because of how many digits your calculator allows you to see. So I'm just going to switch uh, my mode into scientific to show you that this can change. So I'm going to do the same value again. I'm going to say 10 to the negative 8.25 and hit enter. And here I'm forcing, I changed the mode, so my, I'm forcing my calculator into scientific notation. And notice that this says 5.623 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so I mean, Significant figure-wise, yeah, we're kind of um, fudging the rules here, but that's okay. The, the overall integrity of this number is still maintained. Um, you know, 5.6 versus 6.0, that is okay. Okay, so um, kind of basically the, the other answer is you have or 5.62 times 10 to the negative 9 molar, depending on your calculator. Okay. So really, um, when I'm looking at, say, grading exams and things like that, I'm looking for the integrity of the number. Okay? I'm making sure, especially that you have this power here and that your number is 
uh, very close to what I'm looking for. Okay. Now that still isn't to say that you can put as many digits down as you want. You still have to follow your sig fig rules. Okay. But um, just know that depending on your calculator, depending on how many digits you're able to see, uh, your numbers may be slightly different. Okay. All right, so uh, I want to just kind of combine this question with our previous section, which was the ionization of water. And that, what if I ask another question? Is uh, we can calculate this one, but let's also ask ourselves what is the concentration of OH minus? So if we're given a pH value, we can calculate the concentration of H3O plus, which is what we did. And then if we need to calculate the concentration of OH minus, okay, all we have to use is our KW expression that we learned in our previous section. So we have KW is equal to concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of OH minus. Right, and we've solved this before in the, the last video, but it wouldn't hurt to do it again. We're looking for the concentration of OH minus. So I'm going to divide both sides by the concentration of H3O plus to get that by itself. So I have the concentration of OH minus is equal to KW divided by the concentration of H3O plus. So KW, remember you have to memorize that value. You just need to know it, put it in your memory banks. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4. Concentration of H3O plus is what we calculated up above. Okay. Um, which value you use doesn't make too much of a difference. We're, again, Okay, I keep a range of numbers in mind. So we want to plug this into our calculator. So I have 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 6 times 10 to the negative 9. And again, put those in parentheses to make sure that this denominator stays in the denominator when you do your calculation. And we have... Um, basically 1.67 times 10 to the negative 6 and that's going to be molar uh, or molarity of our OH minus. So two answers here to the questions. We have our concentration of OH minus and we have our concentration of H3O plus. All right, in the next video, I'm going to kind of do a summary of both 10.3 and 10.4, um, which is basically what we've done in this example here. And then I'm going to give you a table of pH values, concentration of H3O plus and concentration of OH minus um, to practice calculating all of these out because um, you'll definitely see something like that on the exam.